This is your second year coaching in Sydney. How can you top last season's effort to bring in away on the NPL? Well, uh, we don't actually look at it from what we what we like. We look at it from more of a point of view from what we've developed and where we are now in our starting point from last year. So already the starting point for the group of players we have is at the at a, a higher level. So our starting point's higher. Um, winning was was good. That, you know, we want a winning culture and we, we want to develop players with a winning mentality. But the areas we want to also develop them is there. Mental attitude, and that obviously goes hand in hand with winning. Physically, they need to improve, which we've gone to a, a, another level. Technically and tactically, they've improved. But the real win came, we got three players uh, into the A-League squad, part of the squad. So two on scholarship and one on contract, which is a full-time contracting player. So that's that's the, uh, the winning part for us. But yeah, look, it's a bonus for the players. For so with all the success that Sydney have had at youth level, do you feel as if you're creating the next generation of superstars for Sky Blues? Uh, what we're trying to create is a pathway and also a process to an outcome, the outcome being an A-League player and the process being what's the best process to develop an A-League player that when a player um, becomes an A-League player, he goes through probably two transitions. One from the, the, the junior part of the academy, or it's the academy as a whole, but part of the academy up to 18 is trained at, uh, at VSB at Buckley. And then through the academy director myself and the technical director, we decide which players uh, progress to the 20s and the, the first team or NYL. And then that's a transition there. The loadings increase there and the, the, the workload and the, the mental capacity goes up to another level. So then after training there, uh, if they're good enough, they do sessions with the first team. And then you can go, you gauge off where they're at physically and technically and mentally practically if they're, they're capable. So yeah. if they get a contract or uh, their 12 months period there is a transition period again and that's the, the second transition period. That's the, the really hard one where players either don't cope with the demands or whether it's a mental approach or physically can't cope with the loads. Um, uh, but we like to think technically and tactically they're all in a good space. So two transitions, if they get through both of them then we've got an early player. Do you get a lot of joy from uh, seeing a player go from a youth player to a first team only player? Yeah, well, that's for me. That's the highlight because you you got a lot of responsibility to deal with kids uh, from sixteen to twenty, turning twenty one. We have a range of age groups. Um, everything sort of hinges on 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 that three four year period um, where their future could lie. Um, we encourage them to have a plan B, whether they go to uni, extra schooling, part time job. So they're thinking about something else, not only just football, just to make sure uh, they cover themselves. The reality is, uh, if you've got 40 players, you might get one player, a league player, out of 40. You, you may get two. If you get a golden generation, you might get three or four. Um, the likelihood of, of four or five from one team is is, is not high, but if, if it happens, means we've We've recruited well, we've developed well, our process is good, and the outcome is the, the four or five. So how important do you believe competitions such as the NPL and the NPL 2 and the NYL and the all the youth leagues are as for the future of the A-League? There's been a bit of debate on what's, uh, what's been good for the development of young players today um, and it's probably more related to the national team, the national youth teams and why we're not qualifying for World Cups. Um, we're now in a different structure through Asia, it's a lot more difficult. A lot of the Asian countries are investing more money and more time in their youth um, whereas we've probably dropped off on the funding or we, we've probably stood still too long where in the transition period from National League to A-League we never had enough academies and we basically didn't have enough numbers of players being developed and obviously the cost of developing a player today for parents is, is quite huge. So um, so that's that's one of the hurdles we're still sort of looking at. Uh, the NPL, MYL combined, last year was excellent, 50 games we had for the group of 30, 40 players. So that meant players got uh, a game nearly once a week over a 12 month period. And on top of that, 200 training sessions plus multiple in-house games. So we've created our own extended pathway. Yeah. Uh, there's a bit of com complaints about an eight, eight game, nine game MYL, but when you add it to the NPL um, and pre-season games for both comps, it's, yeah, it's 40 to 50 games, so it's not too bad. You just want to make sure the level of competition remains high. Yeah. Um, so I think hopefully in the future, uh, 
that there'll be some more elite teams, and there'll be more opportunity for young players, and then you'll see a better development pathway when there's more opportunity.